Your mother was smacking in the head. No, no, my mom wasn't a hitter. Really? No, she wasn't a hitter. Who smacked you in the head? <sighs> Very few people. An uncle? No. Very few people. I tell you Maybe what, my, my mom... grandmother cracked me once, but it was, you know, just like get your shit together. Not like trying to hurt me, you know? Just a little smack. I didn't get beat as a kid. But uh, I saw a lot of violence. I saw the, the seeing violence when you're a kid. There's something about like seeing uh, someone you're close to who's an adult beating, beating up like a 10 or 11 year old. You ever see that before? When you so see when you see something like that, I'm you ever sorry. see a grown adult beating the shit out of a 10 or 11 year old when you're a little kid? Yes. That to me uh, was. was that was like a defining moment when I was a little kid. As a parent? Or I only saw parents beat their children. Yeah, I saw someone beat somebody else's kid. It was fucked up to watch, man. When I lived on 205 West 88th Street, we, we, we came, when I came from Cuba, we lived in Jersey for a while. My dad died. We moved to 89th Street. Then something happened at the building. We ended up moving to 88th Street. And I had a kid I had a beef with every day. And one day, I finally got my shit together in karate. Like one day, my sidekick started working, and that fucking right cross started working. And I learned how to use my fucking up block, and I finally had this kid. His name was Rudy the Haitian. He was the only Haitian kid in the neighborhood. We lived on 88th Street. And I fucked him up this day, and his father came down and held my arms. And he made Rudy punch me. And I'll never forget that my lip was bleeding. And he took me upstairs, and he knocked on my mother's door. And my mother opened up the door, and half a fucking hangover. And she goes, what's the problem? And she goes, Joe, Coco, you know. And he goes, next time your son hits my son, I'm going to hit him, and I'm going to come up here and hit you. And wow. My, and my mom turned around and got a butcher knife and chased Rudy's father up the stairs. The <laughs> cops came, and the lady next door said she didn't see a knife. But at, at that point, we were done in the building. Jesus. That was one of the worst there. When I moved to North Bergen, I saw parents that, you know, like, uh, you ever hear a comedian go, uh, you ever hang out with black kids, you go to their house, how they talk to their parents? I could never talk to my, you know. Right, right. That's the first thing I noticed. When I went to Jersey, there was, <laughs> there was certain kids that would take their dish and go, I, I don't want tuna fish sandwich. <gasps> If I ever did that in my house, Joe Rogan, are you fucking kidding me? My mom would take the dish, throw it against the wall, and say, now you're not fucking eating. Go to bed. Like that type of shit. But I also saw a fucking parent in the hallway one day that was standing the way you are with his arms crossed. Talking to the teacher the way I'm talking to you. And a kid standing right here with glasses on. And I'm walking towards him like, you know, I went to the bathroom. I had like a hall pass. And I'm talking, talking, talking. And in the middle of it, the father just going, bam, and hitting him with a backhand. Kid goes down, oh. glasses broken, blood's coming out of the nose. Oh. And he's telling him to get the fuck up before I fucking kill you, you dumb motherfucker. Oh. You said that to him, you dumb fuck. I have seen that. Oh. That kid was the devil, though. Yeah. I knew that kid. Well, the reason why I that knew kid, that kid. Kid was the devil, probably because his dad beat him. And then there was another kid when I went to Catholic school. Guido, father, Genzo, the whole fucking thing, bro. He would come there, the nicest guy in the world, but the son was fucking crazy. And every time he get there, the, the nun would tell him about what he did, and dog, he would punch him the way. Ungayo was throwing punches at, at fucking Stipe. I, I swear to Jesus my mother's grave. Like as he was crawling into the car, like a fucking pound him. 12. Jesus ten, Christ. 10, 10, oh. 10. I got thrown out of that 11 or 10. So now, <sighs> are you looking at me saying, Joey, did they deserve it or whatever? Everybody, every parent had a different, uh, you know, I watched a couple weeks ago. I was stoned to the gills. And I was laughing about how people put people down and shit. And I was laughing about when Julia Serving 
first when the ABA shut down. When the ABA first shut down, if they were, I don't know, Joe, but if there was eight categories, Julius Irving, Irving's led seven of them. Right. And the ABA shut down, and the Sixers picked up Julius Irving. They gave him $6 million, which can you imagine that? What what they give that guy yet? Uh, what they give LeBron? So LeBron's getting about 30 or 40, but yeah. Yeah, he got $6 million for over two years or something with Julius, and he was mm. the biggest player in the world then. Now this guy's getting 154 for three or something. Jesus. So Dr. J switched his number from 32 to 6, and now the NBA All-Star game came. So all the critics were like, Psh, he came up from the ABA. He's going to get his ass kicked in the NBA. All-Star game. What? Go look at those statistics. He went off. He went off because of a white dude named Pistol Pete Maravich. That is far. He went to LSU and led the country in scoring. A white dude ended up becoming a fucking boozer, but that dude knew how to handle the ball because his father would beat him. His father would make him sleep in the garage in the winter oh. and beat him until he learned how to play basketball because there was no losing in his fucking house. Do you understand me, Joe Rogan? Oh. There's no fucking losers in my fucking house. Sleep in the garage. No dinner. <sighs> <clears throat> but Pistol Pete knew how to fucking dribble jack him. And Pistol Pete would take you deep. Pistol Pete could hate. Anybody could cover. The best black dude in the league could cover Pistol Pete. But if you watch that NBA All-Star game, Pistol Pete is stopping, chopping people and giving behind-the-back passes to Julius Irving. He even looks at a dude on one pass. He's looking at Bob McAdoo. I'm coming. And all of a sudden, he just puts the ball between his legs, and he gives it to Julius Irving. Why? Why? Because that kid's father stayed on it. There's different thoughts of... Some people can handle that. Some people yes. can't, though. Like some, some guys are broken. But, I mean, it's like how much pressure is too much pressure to create like a superstar like that. Like, didn't Tiger Woods, didn't his dad put a lot of pressure on him as well? Isn't that Fuck, the story? Let's, let's talk about the, 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 the guy that died last week. But that's a different thing. Like a, well, the Tiger Woods... Joe Jackson! Be, what the fuck is different about that? He created three fucking kids that changed the fucking one kid that changed the fucking world. Right. He beat him. He fucked him in the ass. Supposedly. Whoa, where did you I'm hear not that? I don't know. He did sexual assault. I think one you got to be really careful with saying things like I'm that. I'm sorry. Listen, it's the Me Too thing. Things come out. What are you gonna do? Everybody's getting the blame for something. You know what I'm saying? You, but is this something you really heard? I have. I've heard sexual abuse allegations from his father, but but I listen to listen to the, what what did he create? What well, did he do? What did Joe Jackson do by making them, not letting them fucking, uh, and, and let me tell you something. The one kid could have gone to a college to play basketball. The kids had talent as it was. Gary, Indiana. You ever go to Gary, Indiana? No. It's like hell, uh, uh, fucking Delaware, and then Gary, Indiana. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Gary's like crazy. He made these kids rehearse. He pulled them out of Gary, took them up to fucking Barry Gordy. You know, you think about this shit. Mm. Some of them probably hated him for what he did. You look back at those lessons that you got, Joe Rogan. How many people did you look at one day and go, fuck you, motherfucker? But then two years later, you look back and you look at the lesson you learned from the whole experience. And you actually have to go back and hug that person and go, hey, man. Thank you for that time. It made me a better motherfucker today because of what you did. It made me a better person. We're not going to agree with everything that happens along the way, Joe Rowe. Mm. But it's made us who the fuck we are today. That's an interesting thing because we grew up in a time where uh, kids were just allowed to run around outside. Everybody ran around outside. That was just normal, <laughs> right? When you were a little kid, you ran around outside. Nobody just runs around outside. I remember the first time I saw a grown lady hit, she hit my cousin. We were both around the same age. I was probably six and she was five. And this lady slipped on ice in front of her apartment building. And uh, she got up and my cousin just unfortunately happened to be standing right in front of her when she fell. And she got up and she said, don't you laugh at me. And she smacked her in the face. She wasn't laughing at her either. Just she smashed her in the face, man. Like it was, she smacked her hard, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I was, I mean, we were both little, little kids, and watching some grown adult smash our cousin.
cousin in the face. We're like, ee, ee. like <laughs> you just gotta realize, like, hey, you can't, you, you know, you gotta be polite. There's some fucking people that will smack you in the face, and she didn't even do anything wrong. There's some evil fuckers out there that'll hit little kids. That's some dark shit, man.